Hello, everybody tuning in from the SACAC 2021 conference. I'm Karen Black. This is Dr. Archie Tucker. Hello, Archie Tucker. I'm Vice President for Marketing, Communication, and Advancement at Alabama a and University. But it's important to note that I actually got my start in admissions, uh, working at a public, small, rural, public, liberal arts institution in the South. And so I am uh, pleased to be here today. And I'm pleased to be here as well. I too have uh, quite a good deal of admissions office experience, always working in the communications and marketing seat, but I've worked at several institutions in admissions as well. Uh, my name is Karen Black. Like I said, I work for HA31. I am a creative content strategist. And also I'm the co-host of a podcast called 31 Minutes. We're here to talk with you uh, and we know who you are and understand your busy schedules and the enrollment funnel and cycle. Uh, but we're here to talk to you today about the potential of podcasting. And Archie, why don't you tell them a little bit about what you do as a podcast host? Yeah, so I actually have a podcast, right? That's why we're here. So it's called Start and Go. Um, Start and Go is a play on the university's marketing tagline, start here and go anywhere. And so it's a podcast in which we talk to people who shape our world uh, in, at Alabama a and University. So that includes our students. It also includes our faculty, our staff, alumni, and members of the community. And so what we try to do is tell uh, the story of Alabama a and University through those various individuals and that Alabama a and University at Alabama a and you can truly start here and you can go anywhere. Folks, as we noted, we understand who you are because we've been you and we understand that enrollment cycle. We know that right now you are wrapping up what you need to do this spring to get the class of 2025 in there and you are already working and thinking about the class of 2026 and beyond. And so what we're going to cover today is for you to think about why should podcasting be one of the things that you take on, right? And the fact that you're busy, we're going to address some of those buts, some of those trepidations, um, and that cost benefit analysis. And then I'm going to talk about what you need to know before you even begin, because doing this successfully and being able to fit it into your schedule and make it a part of your work week uh, is all about good planning ahead of time, brainstorming, figuring out what's uh, achievable, and then doing your pre-production work. Yeah, and so at that point, I'll jump in and talk about how us at Alabama a and University made this work. Um, and I'll tell you, I wasn't excited about it at first. Uh, it, it's what I have least of is time. And so I was like, Karen, I don't know if I could do this. But we'll also talk about what Alabama a and University gets in return. So the ROI that we receive from this. And we'll also uh, round it out with our advice to you. We want to leave you with nuggets that you can take away and actually start your own part podcast at your institution. And folks, I just wanted to mention that in a 45 minute presentation, we definitely can't get into all the nuts and bolts of the technology choices that you're going to need to make, how to actually get in there and start recording, what kind of microphone to use, et cetera, and all of that promoting of your podcast. Uh, but I'm gonna mention some tips for what you need to think about to get that moving. And also at the end of the presentation, we'll share with you how to go and download a worksheet that HA31 calls our think sheet about podcasting so that you can use that with you and your team um, to do what you need to do to get started. So why podcasting? Great question. You're already doing so much and podcasting seems like it's a big thing to take on. But actually, we know that it can be a very effective student recruitment tool. Um, it's so much more as well for your campus and for many other offices and colleagues of yours. But for you, it will really save on time, talent, and treasure. It might not seem like it, but actually podcasting is incredibly affordable. So podcasting is incredibly affordable to get into compared to video production, compared to many traditional print pieces that you might do, and even compared to some digital marketing. Um, and it also builds your library of evergreen content. You, many 
schools that create a podcast have a blend of evergreen and timely content. Archie is going to talk about that. But you can start building out episodes that are about your admissions process at your college or just addressing the college search process for families in general. And then you can interview people around campus and talk about timely topics or introduce your listeners to some of your faculty members in your different schools and departments. And also podcasting is consumable almost anywhere, anytime, right? Uh, the reason that we like the earwaves above the video waves sometimes is because you can listen to that podcast when you're walking the dog, when you're going on your run, when you're commuting to and from work. And young people are podcast consumers, and that's who you're trying to reach. They listen to podcasts between classes, to and from school. So reach them where they live. I wanted to throw in some stats here. Uh, down at the bottom, podcastinsights.com is a great place to get up to the minute stats. These are pre-pandemic numbers here. But about okay. half, half of the U.S. Uh, at this point uh, are podcast listeners, and they are affluent, they're educated, and they're loyal to their content. More than that, um, podcasting is now mainstream, right? This is just a slide to show a little bit of that, right? Uh, three quarters of the U.S. population now knows what podcasting is, and half of people are fans of one or more podcasts. So you're really able to reach people where they are, live and where they're listening. Folks, all these statistics are available at podcastinsights.com for you if you need these. So let's get into, okay, that all sounds great, Karen and Archie, but. But like I said in the beginning, uh, I am extremely busy as a VP at the university. I have several departments that I'm responsible for. And so I told Karen, you know, I don't know if this is, it sounds like a great idea, but I don't know if I'm the one to, to host it. And she's like, ah, uh, you know, we'll take care of all the heavy lifting up front. You know, all you have to do is show up. Yeah, right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so being able to manage your time, but once you get started, it's a lot of fun. And so it's so rewarding. And I find that it is one of the best hours that I spend each week. Uh, when I'm able to record and just talk to various individuals from around the university community and around the community in general. Um, again, been able to talk to several students uh, at the university. We've talked to several alumni. Uh, we've talked to several uh, faculty members and also members of the community. Uh, we actually have a 100,000 watt radio station at the institution. And so aside from uh, uh, playing this podcast or placing it wherever you listen to your podcast, it's also on our radio station. And so uh, it, it never amazes me when I'm able to get feedback. Hey, when is the next podcast coming out? Or hey, I enjoyed the interview with this person or that person. And so there's just a lot of positive benefits uh, that have uh, that I've been able to yield from it. One that I also want to mention is just the new information that you learn. And I think this is possibly what uh, will perhaps be more valuable to you as admissions counselors and recruiters. And it's because of what I'm learning. For example, we have a, a professor, uh, Dr. Kazma Naka, who's in uh, the forestry department. And so through him, I, on the podcast, actually, I was able to learn that over out of the 50, out of, let's see, if, make sure I get this right, out of all of the African Americans that work for the US Forestry Service, almost half of those individuals are Alabama a and University graduates. And so that's an amazing stat that I had never heard before, but you better believe that we're marketing that now. And so that's the information that we want our recruiters to know because we may have students that are interested in forestry or we may have students that didn't know or prospective students that didn't know this major or career path existed. And so, um, you know, just learning information like that has been just invaluable uh, to the institution and our recruitment efforts. Absolutely. And folks, it's those types of nuggets of gold that you're going to find when you start doing this, because we know that institutions by nature are siloed in the way they operate. Um, your counselors might have their talking, they have their talking points, right, that they've been using for cycle after cycle. This is a great way to actually be able to get out there and learn some new things that are happening and some things that were already happening, but maybe that talking point 
didn't make it to your desk. Also, I want you to know podcasting is not a quick on the fly endeavor where you can just hit record hit stop, and then upload your content to the cloud. If you're a podcast listener, you know some podcasts are like that. Um, but what we're recommending here is something with a little pre-production to it, a little bit of editing to it, and a, and a little bit of slickness to it, while also sounding natural and being able to really amplify the voice of, of your campus. When you're trying to make time to do this, think about some of your other channels. Do a communications channel audit and I'm not saying to get rid of things. This is not a substitute for something, but I am I am recommending that you rethink um, maybe what can you retire or what can you delegate to somebody else or reassign, reconfigure the way that you push things out on your channels now, because making the space to have a podcast um, will definitely reap you more rewards than the time it takes to do it. So. Let's talk a little tiny bit about who else is podcasting and why that matters to you. These are just four examples. These are examples that I pulled actually last summer when I was doing a podcast presentation. Uh, if you want to look any of these up, all four of these are sort of a different flavor. The Purdue podcast is the official university podcast. Um, Georgia Tech is Rick Clark, who's the head of admissions there. And it's just him interviewing his counselors and the counselors sometimes interviewing him. Sometimes they interview somebody from off campus. That's a good one to listen to. That, those, one, uh, those are 10 minutes long. So they're nice digestible bites. Bard is fun. It's kind of homegrown. And uh, we like that one because it's all it's it's all it's everything right they talk about admissions they talk to people in different departments they even have an episode where they talk about a famous ghost story that is on their campus uh, about a, a haunted building um and Tulane is really great Tulane is an example there's only three episodes and they started last spring at this time during the pandemic and I can only guess that they uh, because they started strong um and then there's not new content on there. My guess, and this happened to, to myself and my colleague, is that the pandemic and everything that came with the pandemic probably messed up their production schedule. So, but they're a great one to listen to as well. Um, and who else is podcasting, Archie? Oh, wait, I want to say one more thing to our listeners. Go ahead and research your competition and find out if they are podcasting or not, especially out of the admissions office and have those samples to be able to play to the people on your team who are helping you plan this out. You need to know what's out there. FYI, not a lot of colleges are podcasting yet from the admissions office. So it's still a really good idea. It's a great opportunity. It sure is. So let's talk about Start and Go. <clears throat> Start and Go, as you see, is Alabama a and University's. Man, I'm in, I'm in my 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 mold you are you are <laughs> start and go is is alabama a and university's weekly one-on-one -on -one conversations with the people shaping our world hosted by archie tucker vice president for marketing <laughs> communication and investment man that felt good <laughs> <laughs> so start and go is our um official university podcast and again it's a play on our marketing tagline which directly markets to prospective students that you can start here at alabama a m and you can go anywhere and so <clears throat> we thought that this was a, a great approach to be able to reach prospective students uh, as one constituent group because they're able to hear from current students who are on the podcast, guests of the podcast. And so they're able to hear why they chose Alabama a and University. They're also able to hear uh, the experiences that they've gained at Alabama a and University. We're able to talk to young alumni and we're able to talk to them about hey, tell us what you learned while you were here at Alabama a and and how it helped you for the real world. Uh, talk to us about what you're doing now in your career um, and, and how your, your time at Alabama a and prepared you for what you're doing now. And you will find that we have some of the most fascinating young alumni. Uh, one, and I think we'll, we may hear from this, from um, this particular episode, was with the Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin, uh, the Honorable Mandela Barnes who happens to be one of our young alumni from Alabama a and University. And so being able to accomplish a major feat uh, still in his 30s as it relates to age is phenomenal, but it started right here at Alabama a and University. And so I'm sure that you guys have those same stories or very similar stories on your campus. And my question is who's telling those stories and how are they telling them? Um, 
or do they have a admissions focus in mind in terms of reaching that prospective student? And so I wanted to just share that with you. Great. Archie, let's take a listen um, to a few clips from Start and Go. We're going to listen to the episode where you interviewed or a clip from the episode where you interviewed um, Mandela Barnes, Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor, and also current students, uh, Kayla Henderson. And also, I'm going to put in here um, our show trailer, which we recorded before we started anything else. Uh, so folks, we're just going to play some clips for you now. Hi, I'm Archie Tucker, Vice President for Marketing, Communication, and Advancement at Alabama A&M University, and I'll be your host for Start and Go, A&M's brand new weekly podcast. These one-on-one -on -one conversations with people shaping our world will feature students, faculty and staff, alumni, and community members from across the state and beyond. Start and Go premieres Wednesday, September 9th. 2020 with weekly episodes each Wednesday during the fall and spring semester. I hope you will join us to learn about great things happening on the Hill and meet some of the great people from our Bulldog community who are working to leave a legacy and make the world a better place. The first episode features Brian Hicks, Director of Athletics at Alabama A&M University, talking with me about the current state of our athletic programs, achievements, football and other fall sports and what it means to have Chris Paul wearing Alabama A&M University Jordans. Stay tuned, subscribe now so you don't miss an episode and tell all your Alabama A&M friends about Start and Go. Kayla, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So I want to start by, well, if you would start by telling our audience just a little bit about yourself, including your hometown and what activities you're involved in here on the campus of Alabama a and Okay. I am currently, I was born and raised in Shawnee, Kansas. I am an only child. My mom uh, raised me as a single parent. She is a pastor at St. Paul a and Zion Church. Um, growing up, I loved my childhood. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I used to be a junior chiefs cheerleader, which we are the Super Bowl champs of 2020. Um, when I was <laughs> which was so cool. Also, um, I danced with Kansas City Friends of Alvin Ailey. Um, I've been on the radio, um, Hot 103 Gems, locally here in Kansas City um, at this start at the age of 16, which we did... Um, Every Saturday morning, we had an on-air show. Today's special guest is the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Wisconsin and Alabama A&M University alumnus, Mandela Barnes. Lieutenant Governor Barnes, welcome to the show. Oh, man, thank you so much for having me. Now, you are the first Black Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin and one of the youngest in the nation. How does making that type of history feel, and more importantly, how proud is your family of this huge accomplishment? Well, it's a really good feeling. Um, I'm, I am actually the youngest uh, lieutenant governor in the nation. I'm the actually the youngest Democrat elected in a statewide office in the entire country Wow! Uh, at this moment. So to be in this position, um, it, you know, brings me a lot of joy, but it, it also brings with, with it a, a sense of responsibility. Wow, Archie, it must've been a blast from the past to listen to our show trailer. Yeah, I know it was. It really, uh, those were two of my better interviews. <laughs> uh, and it shows potential students, hey, the, the sky is the limit. You know, I can start at Alabama A&M and I can become lieutenant governor of a state. And so it's just a, a tremendous testament to the work that, you know, we do on our campuses. And once again, you know, the same work is happening across your campuses. Uh, you're training students uh, to be future leaders in this nation and beyond. And so, again, my questions are, you know, who's telling those stories and how are they telling them? And, and this is a great opportunity to be able to do that on your campus. Absolutely. And the opportunities to promote this content, link to this content, continue to push it out 
um, really it is evergreen content. So the, the opportunities are kind of endless, um, especially for people in the uh, admissions offices. So folks, I wanna talk about what to know before you begin, which is part of why I played as uh, some of the clips from Start and Go, uh, Archie's show trailer, which we recorded back in August of last year before we launched the podcast. Um, there's a reason to record a show trailer and do that so that you have all your ducks lined up in a row when you decide to drop your first episode and actually um, begin the podcast itself. So, oh, and I wanted to mention too, folks, you can go to Libsyn or in any podcatcher of your choice, just type in Start and Go Alabama, and you'll find Archie's park podcast. Or if you type in 31, the numbers 31, 31 minutes, you'll find the podcast that I do with my colleague, Karen Adams. Um, that one is about enrollment marketing. So that's uh, of interest to you as well. Uh, I, you know, Karen, I, I would also like to add in terms of what you should know before you begin. I didn't know anything. <laughs> Let me just say that. And so thank goodness I had a, a Karen uh, who could kind of guide me through and assist me. Uh, but ensuring that you make time for it uh, is very important. There's a lot of work on the front end of it. Once you get going, it's a lot smoother. It's a lot easier. Uh, but you you want to make sure you're you have a home for your your podcast and so that takes some work on the front end uh, also you want to make sure that the the audio is is right and you have the right equipment uh, in terms of microphone and uh, headset like I have here and this is the official headset actually of starting go <laughs> but you want to make sure you have the the right equipment and uh, you have someone that's working on this that has good editing um, um, a good editing background if your show is not going to be live. And so those things are important. So I just wanted to make, make note of that as well. Thank you. And thanks for saying that. And folks, you, you may have a partner uh, like myself and, and our firm, or you might not, and that's okay too. We're actually here today to talk to you about how to get this done, whether you do have a partner or not. Um, but Archie makes some great points there that it's really, it's more of an investment of time upfront than of money. <laughs> Um, but once you invest in that time up front, and it really, it does pretty quickly, because Archie and his team are on season two. Uh, they started in September 2020, and they're already on season two. And now it's like a well-oiled machine. Um, so you, you we're, will- We're getting there, Karen. Yeah, we're yeah. There. <laughs> All right. Well, a somewhat well-oiled machine. Yeah, it um, squeaks a little, but it's, it's great. <laughs> it's, like, it, it's working, right? Um, sure. So folks, how do you get there and how do you invest in that uh, with your time up front? It's all about pre-production. So when we share our think sheet with you at the end of this session and, and tell you how to go get that, that is going to help you with some prompting questions on it to start to map out what is your purpose? What is your audience? Who are they? What do they want? How do they behave? And what kind of content do you want to give them? to figure out some details like your show name, um, who the team is that's going to help you with this on campus. When do you wanna launch? Um, is that timed with something else on your campus? Who do you want your guests to be? Uh, and really it's all about what are you trying to achieve, right? Starting with the end in mind, uh, what do you want those listeners to feel, think, and then do when they connect with your content? Uh, I also want to mention that when you start in your pre-production, don't forget to be adaptable to change. You might have in your head that you want this to sound like an episode of uh, This American Life from NPR. Well, that might not be what you can achieve, and that actually might not be the best plan for your audience and what you want them to feel. Um, so be adaptable to change when you start. As Archie said, make time on your calendar now. And then when you get into content development, bring the stakeholders together around you who are the people that are going to be interested and jazzed up in doing this. Uh, my advice about brainstorming is that you should put all of your pie in the sky ideas on paper. Get it all out there. Brainstorm, brainstorm, brainstorm away. It's better to have more because what you're going to be doing is scaling back. Um, and figuring out how you can achieve the must-haves on that brainstorming list with the resources that you have at hand. I think I mentioned earlier, go ahead and do a Comflow and channel audit. Uh, 
so you can figure out how podcasting fits into all of the other communications channels uh, that you and the university are uh, using. And then think about who your champions are, uh, the people that are going to go to bat for you about this new idea of starting an admissions podcast, and who are your high influence stakeholders. Uh, get them on your side, right? Win them over to the idea of doing a podcast and, and help them be your megaphones about starting this project. Also, I just wanted to mention, like I said earlier, we don't have time to get into all of the production and launch details that you're going to need to know. But my advice is be careful. Don't fall down the rabbit hole of all of the different things you can read, all of the different tutorials you can do, um, the lists of hundreds and hundreds of different microphone types that you can choose from. It's very tempting to go down that rabbit hole, but all it will do is waste your time and stop you from getting started. Just start small, right? Get a few recommendations from a few friends that you might know or a few colleagues who are already podcast enthusiasts. Who on your campus is already doing podcasting? Do you have a radio station like Dr. Tucker does? Do you have student podcasters? Do you have an audio, video, film and television uh, major at your school? So there are students that are doing audio engineering already. Tap into what you've got right there on campus. Start small with your season one. You can always grow if you have a strong foundation. Make sure you manage everybody's expectations. Not only your own expectations, right? You're not Ira Glass, and this might not be NPR, but it can still be something really, really good. But also make sure you manage your boss's expectations and the expectations of the team that's helping you do this. Um, if you wanna have an hour episode two times a week, that's very different than having a 10 minute episode two times a month. <laughs> And make sure you get some of those key internal stakeholders involved early, especially, and I cannot say this enough, your institution's social media manager. That person is going to help you with everything from graphics to just getting the word out that the school has a new podcast. Make sure you stay organized. And like I said, ask for that help from the experts who are already around you, right? Uh, you can call me up and please partner with HA31 if you would like to, because we love doing podcast projects. But you can do this on your own. And I bet you have podcast experts right there in your office that you didn't even know about. When I say stay organized, I just wanted to show Archie a little sample here of some of the documents. These are from 31 Minutes, but uh, we stay very organized with our interview questions, our show notes, um, our schedule, et cetera. And this is kind of what we help our clients do to stay organized. But um, I'm going to hand it over to you now to talk about how you're making it work at Alabama A&M. Yeah, thanks, Karen. So, you know, at Alabama A&M, uh, when you look at where we started and look at where we are now, it's almost like start here and go anywhere, right? The marketing tagline. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Just start and go. But we had six weeks of pre-production. Um, we recorded the the teaser or the trailer. Um, I want to add that, you know, there was even, I'm big on music. And so I was very, I should say, influential in selecting the, the actual song. And we went through countless songs. Uh, that we can utilize and so um, I found what fit me and my personality and what I'll enjoy hearing every time I hear my voice right after <laughs> and uh, next uh, four guests we had so when we started we had four guests planned and we had two episodes in the can before we launched um, because we were just starting so we wanted to make sure we had a lot of content up front um, we were figuring out schedules and how to make things work, how to schedule appointments, um, figuring out timing for, for editing. And so it was important for us to get uh, a good solid number of guests lined up in the beginning uh, to ensure that we, we had a great start. You know what was good about that is that um, you all were so organized with what guests you wanted. And that was great because that allowed us at the end of each episode, even from that even from that teaser trailer to sort of tease out what was coming next and to know who that next person was going to be. That's been very successful for you. Yeah, yeah I'm actually doing one of those today. <laughs> <laughs> so, but also we defined our internal team and we brought them in early. And so 
as it relates to the internal team, again, it helps because I have a radio station and I have uh, people that understand production and audio quality and editing and things that I can't do uh, as a non-technical person. Uh, but I also have, I have the opportunity to, to have uh, a marketing team. And so people that focus on uh, social media, uh, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or IG, we're getting the word out uh, each week on who uh, the next guest is and when a new episode drops or, or what's coming, uh, things of that nature. And so it's, uh, it's been very, uh, it was very good to get everybody in up front just to kind of identify roles and responsibilities uh, so that everyone sees what part they play and how it uh, adds to the whole. In addition to that, the team owns the creation of the weekly show. So it's, it's a product of Alabama A&M's. Uh, now we, we own it, we have the rights to it. And so, um, you know, it's just something that has been great and we've really taken advantage of it. And again, our listenership is growing. Uh, we're getting, uh, we get a lot of feedback uh, based on uh, the, the, the quality of guests that we've had. That's really what I've been most impressed with. Um, when you look at some of the community members we've had, some of our students that have come on and done excellent, uh, an excellent job, uh, the work that our faculty is doing and learning about that uh, is just tremendous. And I'm always getting uh, nuggets uh, as it relates to the student experience or the, the quality of the instruction, things of that nature that as an admissions recruiter and as a former counselor, um, you know, I would be excited to get uh, back when I was uh, doing that work. Um, Absolutely. Wait. You know, I wanted to, to add in there when you're saying about the quality of guests you've been able to interview. You, So you've interviewed Mandela Barnes, right? You've interviewed um, Anthony yeah, Daniels. Uh, yeah, Representative Anthony Daniels, who is the uh, minority leader for the House in, in Alabama, House of Representatives. Uh, you know, he's another great one. Drew Hill, uh, the R&B uh, group. Uh, with Cisco as the you know lead, uh, that Drew Hill. So yeah, so that was really fun. They were actually on campus for a week, so we were able to get them on the podcast. Uh, just a number of other business leaders uh, in the community, and not just in Huntsville, but we've talked to people again. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Barnes is in Wisconsin. Uh, we've talked to uh, Lisa Jones, one of our alums in Atlanta, and just uh, we're 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 reaching out to our. Uh, Alabama a community, but it's a national community. But uh, again, our students come from all over uh, the country and even uh, many uh, foreign nations as well. And so uh, it, it's, it's touching those students wherever they are uh, based on the messages that we're, we're, that are being shared with us. And folks, um, as Archie does this work and his team books guests, they are doing a great job at figuring out how to time what is coming up on the guest schedule with what is happening on campus. So they really understand how to interweave together uh, these multi-purposes, right? Not only is this podcast for admissions, for advancement, for alumni relations, and just for the college community at large, um, but for instance, when Archie interviewed Drew Hill, uh, that was because they were performing at the school's virtual black tie gala. And then the next week after he interviewed this famous, these famous musicians, he interviewed the student who was one of the hosts of the black tie gala. So that was exciting, timely content. Also, it's evergreen content. Uh, right now, if you listen to uh, what they're doing, um, as we record this, actually, this is probably airing in April, but here in March, they are record, uh, they're interviewing on Start and Go a series of female community members and alumni uh, about uh, what they're doing in honor of Women's History Month. So Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. March, uh, we really focus on women's history. Um, in February, we focused on African-American history. And so April, I'm just stuck. I don't, I don't know where to go, <laughs> but, but it's around the corner. So I need to get on it. But, uh, but yeah, so it's just a matter of, uh, you know, one other point of note that I, I want to mention is we also try to have a show that's relevant because our audience is larger than Alabama a and University. Uh, and it's larger than just the constituents of Alabama a and University. And so we want to show how we are relevant with what's happening in society. And so when we spoke with Lieutenant Governor 
Mandela Barnes. It was, I believe, either the week before or the week after the national election in November of 2020. When we spoke to Dr. Naka in the forestry department, uh, one of our professors, uh, we were, what, what also happened, if you will recall, in 2020, aside from the pandemic and aside from uh, the racial and social unrest in the nation, there were forest fires that were occurring in Northern California and uh, Oregon and Washington State. Well, Dr. Naka was able to address that. And so what I also learned, another recruitment point here is that we had two students interning with the U.S. Forestry Service and they were in Colorado and Northern California uh, last summer actually helping to fight those fires in the forest. And so our students are getting that type of experience, but I didn't know it until uh, I interviewed him and got that information on the podcast. And now you know, our community is able to hear that perspective. Students are able to hear that. Recruiters like yourselves, you know, if you were at Alabama a &M University, you're able to take that information and, and really share it with the students uh, who you believe would have an interest. And, and that's one of the benefits and assets to doing this work on your campus. And, you know, I just want to um, add here uh, this last bullet point that you and I talked about before we uh, got on here today, Archie. Bringing your tagline to life, start here, go anywhere, has gone from something that meant something to some folks around the university, but to others may have just looked like four words. And on your podcast, you ask every guest what that means to them. So you're collecting all of this audio content that's really from the heart about what that means to all your different guests, now 22 guests and counting. Um, so you're really breathing life into that tagline of the university and um, making that something special with your brand. Sure, that's right, because not everyone that we interview, again, there's some people in the community and they may not have uh, went to or graduated from Alabama A&M or attended Alabama A&M, uh, may not have ever worked at Alabama A&M, but we are carefully identifying those guests that we know Alabama A&M still, they're aware of the impact of Alabama A&M and the relevance of Alabama A&M University in the community. So again, it's just a wealth of information that we've been able to obtain and share with our listening audience. Absolutely. So uh, I threw this in here, you and I can both talk about this, but, and we've already mentioned these things as we've been talking, but the opportunities for podcasting as a recruitment tool are pretty deep, right? Um, your content appeal can be broad, like Archie's content is has broad appeal because it's for the entire university. But every single episode, no matter who he's interviewing and what they're talking about, could be of interest and would be of interest to a prospective student or their family. Um, yeah, you know. so I, I like to add, you know, for you as a admissions recruiter, uh, perhaps you're not focused on um, all of the various constituents that that we are with Start and Go. Uh, perhaps you're only focused on the prospective student. And so in that case, you do what works for you. So this may not be the exact format, but we certainly believe that we have some good fundamental uh, items here that you can certainly utilize and create a podcast that works for, for you and your institution. Absolutely. Kind of like that last bullet point says, you can respond to your own institutions frequently asked questions through your podcasting content, right? Sure. If you get hundreds of questions about a certain thing on your website or a certain requirement for your application, you can have a podcast episode about that, right? Exactly. And you can bring that expert, whoever that person is responsible for whatever the issue is, you can bring that person on to actually talk about those those issues and, and gain clarity around that. Yep. And you know, this, the content can be pushed out in so many ways, not only on social media, but uh, if you're a recruiter, you can have a link to the podcast or to episodes that pertain to your audience, you know, in the footer of your emails, right? So it's in your, it's in your email footer. Um, this can be a great method to follow up, right? For instance, one of Archie's students that we interviewed early on um, is a real rock star computer science major. Um, this student has won so many uh, national awards and right, yes. pushing his episode out to students that are interested in computer science could be, you know, a, a deal maker, right? Yeah, computer science, entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, he's done a number of different things. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So depending on what content you want to capture on your campus, you can push that out at very um, 
intentional times to your audiences um, and recruiters can use it uh, can use content as a great follow up tool right it's another reason to get in touch with a student that maybe you met out at a fair or uh, at a virtual event online or whatever. Folks, we want to end with some advice and tell you how to get our think sheet. Uh, I have my little couple of nuggets of advice that are kind of at the 20,000 foot view. What, what do you have to say, Archie? Yeah, you know, just do it. Just do it. Um, jump. <laughs> so, but, but have a plan when you jump. <laughs> Don't just jump. Make sure you have a parachute. Um, you know, what I would say is to build your team. If you think this is something that you want to try, uh, identify the right people at the university, at your institution, uh, who could help and support this effort. Uh, is there someone uh, in the marketing department? Is there someone, do you have a radio station? Uh, do you have those technical people that could really help with the audio piece and things of that nature? Uh, but So just build your team. Uh, have a team of volunteers that are willing to to help and assist you and get it off the ground. Be sure to have a focus area and try to stick to that focus area. You also don't want to be all over the place. Um, and so your focus area needs to line up and make sense and identify with whatever the name of your show is. And so for us, it's start and go. Um, and so not every episode is a prospective student, I mean, excuse me, a current student, and not every episode is a young alum, but yet I, we find a way to pull in Alabama and m University uh, to show the relevance of the institution, no matter who we're talking to. Absolutely. And, you know, so my two cents, uh, kind of like you said, jump, but with a parachute, I would say be deliberate, be deliberate about deciding to do this. It is not nearly as hard as you might think it is. It's also not nearly as easy as you might think it is, right? So give it the time on your calendar and with your weeks of pre-planning that it deserves. Uh, you're not going to hit record today, post a podcast tomorrow, and be able to get it out there on the podcatchers. It takes time. Um, so be deliberate. Uh, be realistic about what you can achieve with your resources. And uh, I think I said this earlier, start with the end in mind. I believe that you should do that with any communications project. Start with the end in mind. What do you want that listener to feel, think, and do, right? You want them to apply to your college or university. Folks, this is a little image of our uh, two-page think sheet from HA31. Like I said, it has some prompting questions for you and your team to get started. We also have some advice and a little bibliography of podcasting terms for folks. Uh, nobody should feel um, ashamed if you don't know what some of this terminology is or just starting. Go to ha-31.com slash best-ideas or just go to ha-31.com and click on best ideas on the top and you'll be able to fill out a little form and, and request our think sheet. We'll send that to you. Um, we're not trying to sell you anything, but I am here to answer your questions. And so is Archie. We appreciate that SACAC went on uh, with their schedule this year, even though they had to remain virtual, but this is pre-recorded, so we can't do a Q&A. Folks, you can reach me at karen.black at ha-31.com. And I am Archie Tucker, and you just listen to Start and Go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wrong show. Wrong, wrong he show. He loves saying that. But, but Archie Tucker, <laughs> Archie.Tucker at AAMU.edu. That's right, folks. Once again, thank you so much. Uh, go download our think sheet. Let Archie and I know if you have any questions um, about this content. And, uh, and hey, send us an email if you'd like us to share the slide deck. We're happy to do that, too. Uh, you can do it. Get podcasting. You're not going to regret it. Thanks, everybody. Take care.